you wouldn't know Tom Brady if he was drafted by the Browns. If Carmelo Anthony is added to this mix, the team most likely to collapse next year is the Houston Rockets. I don't know if he understands what sensitivity means. This is textbook. This is garden variety sensitivity. Nobody's trying to take anything away from Tom Brady. Tom Brady is all time great. But this notion that he's playing with beer truck drivers and UPS workers is, is, is disingenuous. Skip, Coach Belichick knows how to build a roster. Yep. He's building an outstanding roster. Tom Brady is the catalyst. Mm -hmm. Nobody is denying that, Skip. But to say they couldn't beat the Browns without Tom Brady is disingenuous, and you know it. The NFL has never, ever seen anything like a Tom Brady in his late 30s and early 40s continuing to overcome and rise above a Bill Belichick who has lost his fastball over the last four or five years and allowed this roster to erode and decline dangerously because it got to the point last year he had zero Pro Bowl players on defense. Tom gets too many passes. It's always, yes, it's always what that. He doesn't about? have anybody. How many times have you heard that? I think Tom gets way too much uh, credit for the rest of the players who have NFL uniforms on, who are there, who practice, who do everything. And Belichick, let's give him, he's a pretty good coach and is able to get stuff out of people. Tom Brady does as good of a job as any quarterback I've ever seen at making do with whatever weapons are around him and sometimes lesser talent on the team. I think Brady is great at that. And if you just want to look at this as a tribute to Brady's greatness at being able to win no matter who's around him, I will uh, I'll concede that point. You can give Tom Brady credit for all that, but no, I'm going to give the guy that's making all the decisions and has changed Tom Brady's career because I can tell you, you wouldn't know Tom Brady if he was drafted by the Browns. All right? I tell you, 99% of all the players ever played in this league are system players and Tom Brady is right there in the front of the class saying I'm thank God that I had a system and it was the New England Patriot in the Patriot way. You take Tom Brady off that roster he rolls an ankle week two and Brian Hoyer fills in. What are they? Their best player outside of Brady is a tight end and the second best is a safety. And I think one of the things that saves them is that the reason Green Bay went into the tank without Aaron is because the NFC is also really good. If you look at the Patriots' schedule, they got about six games that appear losable. Texans, Chiefs, Packers, Jets, Vikings, Steelers, they'll be heavy favorites in the rest. And what really gives New England a break, and it masquerades a lot of their issues, is their division, they either go 6-0 and or 5-1 and every year. If Carmelo Anthony is added to this mix, the team most likely to collapse next year is the Houston Rockets. The team I would not bet on is the Houston Rockets. I'm not saying that, that Carmelo is a team obliterator type, a Terrell Owens type. He's passive aggressive in the locker room. He's actually, I, I know him a little, he's a good guy. His, his heart's good, but he just thinks he's a superstar and he's no longer a superstar. No, why do the Rockets want Melo? It was a disaster with Carmelo and D'Antoni and the Knicks. Melo was a much, much better offensive player then than he is now. Yep. Everybody can see the slippage in Melo play, except Melo mm -hmm. and some of these other star players because superstars do not want to come face to face with their own sports mortality mm -hmm. skill. Carmelo Anthony is not the same guy he once was. That's not what Houston needs, Carmelo Anthony. I get it, you want to add a star, you know, he can score. We all know that, and Carmelo can do that. If Carmelo was going to Houston in the big three, I would think it was a great idea if they had a franchise. Right. But here, I just don't think what they have, Carmelo really fits, and you're only going to have the same situation you had in OKC. Yes. Where ultimately, it didn't fit, and it didn't work. I think the starter bench thing actually is not the biggest issue here because if the Rockets were to sign him, he probably, with the loss of Ariz, as you talked about like yesterday, mm -hmm. loss of Bamute, he actually probably, I think, would be a starter, at least in name. He'd be out there for the starting lineups. And I've been adamant that I think that Carmelo has good basketball left and that I think what happened in Oklahoma City 
could be a learning experience, a humbling experience for him. These comments are troubling, period, point blank. You have to submit your talent at the door to that coach and that organization. I know you think you know what's best, but you need to let them mold you into what you should do as an athlete. So when you get out of the essence of sports, I'm not going to listen to the coach. Well, go play golf. Go play tennis. Nobody's trying to make you look sensitive. You are sensitive. You have what's known as rabbit ears. And for the record, I love KD. I really do. But he's got rabbit ears. This is an old term they used to talk about umpires in baseball. They hear everything and they try to please people. And they start to overreact. Umpires start to overreact. They get chippy when they hear things from crowds and the dugouts. It's called rabbit ears. Number one rabbit ears in the NBA, in NFL, in hockey and baseball is Kevin Durant. It's not like we, the, the, the cabal that is the media, spun a wheel and said, oh, KD's turn. It is repeated decision after decision, all by the way, involving some form of social media that has made us realize he is different than every other superstar we have in major American sports. Kevin Durant, like, stop. Yeah. Okay, we, you're the one told us that yes. you, you was, you, you, that you had all the, the counts and everything. You told us this, so <laughs> it's not, no, we're not trying to make you be crazy. Your basketball game is amazing, but you immature. And, and the social secure. media is getting the best of you. So let me tell you, is Zachary rating on your game, basketball, real, real high. Hey, social media and how you, how being a superstar, mm, bro, you stink. Really, KD? You're going to respond to a fan that call you soft. And then when somebody, I don't know if he understands what sensitivity means. Mm -hmm. That's This is textbook. Mm -hmm. This is garden variety. Mm -hmm. Sensitivity. Yep. Call it Rav Transband. He did a little, little sensitivity training mm -hmm. skip, Baylor. Mm -hmm. He's sensitive. It's okay. Just acknowledge it. The hand that feeds him also somehow weirdly fuels him. Yeah, right. Where he needs this, I guess. I've never seen anything like it. He needs to read his Twitter responses, his ats, his mentions, because it somehow fuels him. Most people that I know on Twitter get destroyed if they read too much Twitter. Mm -hmm. Kevin reads everything ever written by 17 year olds about <laughs> Kevin Durant. And does it haunt him? Does it torment him? Does it distract him? D does it hurt his game at all? No, it seems to help. 